Welcome to the calendar tutorial for managing your physician list. We'll begin by navigating to the physician list administration by clicking on administration in the top menu bar and then selecting physician list. Now I should qualify right at the outset that while we call this the physician list administration, this area can also hold information regarding any type of healthcare provider or any facility perhaps where you may need to um, uh, perhaps send reports on behalf of a patient, right? So this could be a long-term care facility. This could be a school district. This could be a nurse practitioner, or a speech pathologist, or, another, or an audiologist, or any one or any facility you wish to list can be included here. Now, if we look uh, towards the bottom of the screen, you can see the list of existing uh, entries of profiles that you already have built. Now, if you're new to counselor, you may see that this list is empty. Right? So you can start building your list or you can provide uh, the counselor support team with a list that you currently have. Maybe you have it as a spreadsheet and we can help you load that in very quickly. Okay, uh, But if you already have a list in place, um, of course, you can review this any time. You could bounce, you know, bounce in here and edit any one of these individual uh, profiles at any time. Like if there's an update and address for Dr. Baldwin, we could simply do so here. Okay. Uh, but what I'm going to show you uh, right now are just a, a quick ways for adding new entries uh, to the physician list, uh, as well as ways for kind of cleaning up your existing list. Okay, so towards the top of the screen here, pretty obvious, you have the ability to enter information um, regarding the name and the citation, business address, etc. for a specific uh, physician or facility um, or any other healthcare provider as well. Uh, you'll note that the only uh, area that's required is the name. Right, so you can be very simple about this and just have perhaps the physician or the facility's name. Now, of course, when you go to send reports, it then wouldn't autofill like their address or their fax number. Uh, so you may want to fill this out. But it's important to note that if you do need to add, uh, you know, an entry on this list on the fly, you can do it certainly from here. You also have the ability to do so from within the patient profile. So I'm going to switch screens here and go over to a patient's profile. And what you'll notice for both the referring and primary physicians, if you click the search option, it'll bring open, of course, a list of your existing physicians on the list. And you'll see in the top right corner, there is an add physician option. And you'll notice the only field required here is the physician name. So if you are, if you get a call from a new patient and they tell you who their referring or primary care physician is, you can get that physician added very quickly to the list. And then of course, use that when you're scheduling the patient uh, to note uh, who the referral source is, right? Or to note this in a report. Uh, so that's a very common way that physicians get added to the list. And what you may notice is that of course, as that happens over time, you may have a bunch of entries on your list that just have names. And you say, gosh, we wanna, we wanna fill this out more, add more detail. Um, so what I'm gonna show you in just a moment here is a way to identify those profiles and get the information added very quickly. Okay. Um, of course, if you already know uh, the physician, maybe you get off the call with a patient and you want to jump right in and modify uh, that profile you just created that just has the name. Of course, you can pop in here and edit and add the information on the fly. Okay. Um, but with the information as you're entering it, once again, you enter as much or as little as is necessary, um, including the salutation, the phone number, fax, email address. You can list multiple email addresses, you just make sure they're common, it's called common delimited. So you add an address, comma, and then the next one, okay? Um, the delivery method, this, this really denotes what the um, healthcare provider or the facility's preferred method of delivery is, right? Some may say, yeah, always fax things to me, or some may say only email things to me, or snail mail it to me, or, um, you know, this needs to be uploaded to an EHR. Right, if you work in a healthcare system that has uh, a larger umbrella EHR you know, for the whole organization. Uh, so you can set those preferences. Uh, you also can put the, um, typically the physicians, in this case it would be more specific to the physician, uh, but their insurance related information, including the MPI. And this means that if you have that physician listed as a referral source, typically for Medicare Part B, uh, traditional Medicare claims, then it will fill the information into the claim. Right, so having this information here saves you time when you're creating claims. Okay, of course you can add notes, you can categorize um, this profile however you wish. Most commonly, it's categorized by the first letter of the last name. However, you could group these. You could say we want to have a group of pediatrics, right, and just have a, have a specific group there. Uh, it's entirely up to you how you wish to sort these. Okay. You may notice that if, if you don't add a category, they will automatically fall into the general area. 
Okay, so you want to monitor your general area as well, and then you can update those and add a specific category if you wish any time. Now, of course, if you make any changes uh, to their uh, profile, go ahead and click Save to lock in those changes. All right, so once again, we can review our list here. We can see any changes we made. Um, you also can disable uh, uh, profiles from this list. So if you wanted to jump in and specifically say, uh, let's uh, remove this one, I should note, by the way, there is the option to delete profiles. However, if this um, profile is currently referenced somewhere related to a patient, for example, uh, this physician maybe is listed as the primary care physician for a specific patient or was listed as a referral source on a professional report. Uh, if you try to delete, it'll say, hey, this profile is currently being referenced, therefore you cannot delete it. So what you do in that case is you simply just say, okay, well, we don't need this one anymore. We're going to go ahead and disable it. So you'd open the profile, uncheck the enabled option, click save. You'll see it's removed from your list. There's no longer an E category because it was the last, or was the only category, uh, only uh, profile in the E category. But if you're looking at disabled, then we'll see our list here. And there is a physician again. So if we ever change your mind, of course, we can certainly re-enable very, very easily. Okay. All right. So that's how you add um, physicians, facilities, healthcare providers to your list in general. Um, now, looking at cleanup, there are some tools in place uh, to help with that. So, for example, the first item on the list under actions is auto sort. This is very commonly used if you feel like your lists have gotten a little out of hand. You've been adding them, but they're not alphabetized, and maybe uh, uh, there's a lot in the general category, but you'd rather not have to manually go and you know put them into specific categories. If you click auto sort, counter is then going to look across, uh, first look at the general category, and try to you know, basically look at the first letter of the last name and put those profiles into that category, right? Um, or within categories, it'll resort them. So if something was sort of out of order, uh, you'll see that they're sorted within that category. Now, if you have a specific category that's you know, different, it'll keep the profiles in that category and just alphabetize within them. Okay. Now, it's not going to be 100%, so you may find there are instances that, hey, that was a facility, I'd rather move that certainly go back in and you can modify it from here, okay? All right, but that's a really quick tool for cleaning up your list. There also is a tool for mass updating physician uh, profiles, right? So if we click mass update, what we can say is, hey, let's look at uh, category A, right? And then you can look and say, okay, which areas do I want to update? Maybe um, we have a project right now where we're making sure that all the phone numbers are in place or all the fax numbers or all the mailing addresses. Right? Let's say, hey, show me the, the instances where the mailing address is not in place. Maybe I'm not concerned about phone or fax in this case or email address. So I'm going to just take the specific categories that I want to see right, and uh, update from there. Right now, in this case, there's only one entry for the A category. If I jump to, let's say, B, there we go. Now we can see, um, and it does reset those filters. So you would need to go back in and say, hey, I'm just looking at address one, address two, city, maybe not business clinic, right? So once again, you can refine this on the fly. Um, there we go. And then you could say, all right, for all of these, actually we have addresses, but maybe, you know what, that's not as clean as we want. Let's go ahead and you know, add capitalization. Um, maybe we wanna add suite in here. Just to, the point being is you can see a lot of information in one view and update them on the fly. I should also note that you can also disable at this point too. So if you recognize maybe there's duplicate profiles, um, or physicians that you no longer, you know, maybe they retired, you can disable from this point as well, okay? And then when you go ahead and click save, of course, it'll accept all those changes for all the various uh, physicians you've looked at. So you can go through the mass update uh, just category by category, and it's a very nice way to not only spot gaps in data, uh, but, but fill it in and save it very quickly. Uh, just some other very quick tools. You can, of course, download this physician list into a spreadsheet. You can download referral activity. So if you want to see uh, where these specific uh, physicians or facilities have been noted um, within a uh, counselor or professional uh, report within a patient visit, uh, you can see that very quickly. You also can out, uh, you know, create some outreach to physicians. So you could send emails directly from here. You could download letters and labels and envelopes uh, if there's an announcement or something you want to send out to physicians. Now, when you bring open the download letters and send email option, uh, you do have an ability, you have an ability at that point to customize the list. So if there's specific physicians or facilities you don't want to send to, you can uncheck them from the list. Uh, you also can really refine 
what shows up in the letter and the email by picking templates and customizing on the fly there. So uh, a lot of neat tools you have available within, uh, or I should say under the actions menu. Now, of course, if you have any questions about the process for adding and updating uh, physicians and facilities to your list, please give us a call, email us, live chat us. We are always happy to help. Thank you for joining us for the counselor tutorial for managing your physician list.